So, how's everybody doing? Everybody's happy? So, uh, I was just going to show up here and just kind of watch and say, hey, well, it's pretty good for me to hang out here. Um, and then Jay Noble goes, hey, I heard you have a great story about Les. And I, I think I do because, you know, I, uh, I met Les while working with a guy named Al DiMiola. He's some jazz guitar player. Some of you guys might know who he is and some of you might not. Les Paul guy. But um, I was working with Al and it's been in there like three years and uh, he was like, Hen, can you do me a favor? And my name's Henry, but Al never called me Hen because, little known fact, cover up yours if you're too young, he could never yell Henry fast enough. So he kept yelling, Hen, come out here and fix this. And I'd have to go out and fix stuff and next thing you know, there I go. Uh, so I've been, I'm still friends with Al even though I got dubbed the name Hen. Um, so he comes downstairs one day and he goes, hey Hen, will you do me a favor? And I'm like, yeah, all right, so I work for you, whatever you need. He goes, uh, will you go pick up my friend? I'm like, all right, sure. I've done that before. He goes, um, go in there and uh, it's, it's, it's Les Paul. You don't mind going to pick him up? And I'm like, no. What'd you say? And he goes, it's Les Paul. Like, and then he had told me that he had just played at his birthday party the night before. And I had seen him leave because I had lived with Al for like, I don't know, like three years at this time. And so I was living with Al, and Al comes down in a really nice suit, and he's like, Hen, i got to go to the city tonight. I'll see you. And I'm like, all right. And he doesn't even tell me. It's like, I'm his guitar tech and his studio manager. It's like, couldn't I go? But <laughs> nevertheless, I didn't go to that. And then he goes, so Hen, just, just go pick him up. And I'm like, all right, so how, where, how, where the hell does he live? He goes, I just go and call him. And I go, what do I say? And he goes, just go on there. There's a Rolodex, and he's old school. He's got the Rolodex. And I'm like, there it is. Do, do, do. And I'm like, what do I call this guy? And I go, he answers, and I go, Mr. Paul? <laughs> and he goes, yeah, hey, who's this? And I told him who it is, and he's like, yeah, yeah, just come down here and make sure you come in the back, because if you ring the front doorbell, I won't answer. And I'm like, all right. So drive into his house. Don't believe it. So I go around. Now, back in the back of his house, you don't understand this either. Some of you will understand what I'm saying here. Uh, he had like a Studer 24 track machine outside by his back door. And I'm like, good God, what's that? And then I'm like, ding, ding, ding. And then the master himself opens the door and it's less. And I'm like, hey, how's it going? He's like, hey. And I'm like, what the hell are you going to do with that? <laughs> he goes, I'm trying to decide whether or not I'm going to throw it away. And I go, don't worry, you know, like, Al, we have a whole bunch of stuff. We can, we can come get that for you if you want. <laughs> and I was going to come get that all by myself. But that's the God's honest truth. That never happened because I'm not going to be that way. Um, and if I did, I wouldn't tell everyone sitting here. So true story, we go in and, like, I was in his house and, like, uh, you know, I tell this story to a lot of people. and like, what? And so I go in and there's, like, RCA Ribbon 77 Mike sitting around and Les Pauls I've never seen. And I'm like, what is this? And he's like, oh, this is, this is, I'm like, how many of these things you got here? And he goes, I might have 200 in the house. And I'm like, golly, because I love guitars. I mean, that's just the, that's the end all be all. So like it or not, let's go, you ready? And I'm like, all right. So we get in, we go back to Al's house. And so I'm like freaking out because, you know, I work for Al D and now all of a sudden like Al Demio and Les Paul is going to sit and hang out. And so we're playing tracks. He's doing a new record. So we were all sitting there laughing and joking and Les is going, hey, you got any popcorn? <laughs> and Al goes, Hen, we got popcorn? I'm like, yeah, I'll go get popcorn. So little known fact, Les loves popcorn, or he did, God bless him. But uh, I made popcorn for the master, brought it down, and he, we sat back, and then by then it was like, hey, let's go grab some guitars. So I would go pull out all the Gibsons that he had. And so I played rhythm while Les played a lead, which is the best thing I ever can say. So... Uh, I don't really have to play guitar with anyone else. I, I don't mean that in a bad way, but, and this is the kicker. It's the kicker. I play guitar with Les and then Al Demiola watched, which I thought that was a little bit better. Now, there you go. That's the end all be all. No lie. It was a super good day. It would last for about like, I seem like an eternity because I can remember every second of it. It was probably an eight, nine hour day. I picked him up in the afternoon and I was driving him back to his house in Mawa at like three or four in the morning. So I'm driving there. It's Les Paul in the car. <laughs> so I'm driving and his cell phone rings and he answers it 
And he starts talking. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. And you hear him just talking. I'm like, what are you doing? He goes, hey, hey turn on. And like he was doing a radio interview from the car <laughs> saying, hey, I'm getting taken up to my house by my friend. And I'm like, he said, my friend. <laughs> And I'd take them all the way home. And this is the little known joke. I never geek out on anybody as far as like asking for an autograph because virtually I always said, well, I like to do what I do, so I'll be around these people. I don't care. And a long time ago, a lot of really cool people I like said, hey, don't ever take a picture. You'll be back. And I'm like, oh, okay. I kind of understand what that means. So I had a picture from the birthday party of Al playing with Les. And I'm like, I don't want to do it. So I said, hey, Les, will you do me a favor and sign this picture? He goes, yeah. And I show him the picture, and it's a horrible picture. And he goes, is this the best picture you have? I go, it's the only picture I got. He goes, there you go. And he flips it over, and he signs it. And he goes, here you go. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. And that was my day with Les Paul. It was a good day. We got time for more people. Come on up. We're going to get this guy up here now. What's your name? I'm Ryan O'Hara. Ryan. Here's Ryan, everybody. Nice round of applause. Thank you. My name's Ryan, like I just said, and uh, I'm a current student here at Full Sail and really enjoying it. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to share a quick story. Um, I was really into baseball when I was younger. I mean, not like I'm old or anything now, but... Uh, <laughs> When I was growing up, I was really into baseball, and I played throughout the year, every year. And through that time, my dad was always playing classic rock or, or blues or that kind of music through the speakers. We were always rocking out on the way to the, to the games, getting pumped up and everything. And, uh, you know, I thought I was really passionate about baseball, and I really liked it. And then I, uh, I watched Led Zeppelin once, and I saw Jimmy Page up there with Les Paul, and he was just so into his craft. I mean, it was amazing. This guy was just so into what he was doing. And he had this beautiful piece of wood in his hand, and he was just making these crazy sounds out of it and beating it with a, a bow and all this kind of stuff. And I was just like, wow, it's incredible, you know? So I started reading up on some of these bands that I really liked, and somehow each one brought me back to this instrument called a Les Paul or just some kind of multi-track recordings and that kind of stuff. And I had no idea what it was all about. And... Uh, but then I started reading up on Les Paul, and I was like, i got to find out who this guy is since he's pretty much everywhere. And like we heard earlier, he had an amazing career. I mean, almost 80 years of just doing this stuff in the music industry, and it just blew my mind. This guy was so dedicated and so passionate about what he did. It, it was just, i never seen anything like it. And uh, so I started listening more to the music, and I started liking it a lot more, and I was like, wow, this is really cool. And then my dad, one day, he took me to a music shop, and I was like, all right, I'll go, I guess. Why not? And I got in there, and it was just a wall of Les Pauls. And I just, my mouth dropped. I'd just never seen anything so beautiful before. And I just, I didn't know why. I was just like, wow. The way the light glistened off of them and then the signature on it, I was just like, it's incredible. And this guy was like, here, try one out. I was, I freaked out because I don't know what I'm doing with it. And I sat down, and I just strummed it, and it just, it just felt so right. It felt cool. It felt good. And it was just an amazing feeling. And from that moment on, I really fell in love with music, and, and that passion that he had, I started getting, and I was like, wow, this happy-go-lucky guy working in the music industry for 80 years and still going at the time uh, was so happy and everything because he really loved what he was doing. And so I started playing guitar more, and I started getting into it more, and I started listening to more music and actually really hearing everything that was going on and started understanding what multi-track recording was all about, and it just blew my mind how amazing this guy was. And, and he was actually the first one. I never really met the guy, unfortunately. I would love to just even shake his hand. But uh, he was the first guy that really showed me that you could do what you love and be passionate about it, and you would never work a day in your life. And you would just keep going with it and just, I don't know, it really blew my mind. I just really want to thank Les Paul for showing me what true love and passion was all about. So thank you, Les Paul. Thank you. Thank you. 